Number theory, elementary properties of divisibility. We have the whale ordering principle. It says any non-empty set of positive integers contains the smallest number. And that kind of follows if you logically think it through. Now we have our division algorithm. It says if A and B are positive integers, then there are unique integers Q and R such that a is equal to B times Q plus R, where 0 is less than or equal to R is less than B. Let's uh, take a look at an example of that. First off, we got A is equal to B times Q plus R. And 0 is less than or equal to R is less than B. Well, if we think of a, a number example, if we're going to divide 17 by 5, that'd be 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract that. And then we get 2. Now, this top part is our quotient. And this 2 is our remainder. So if you think of the uh, quotient as our Q and the remainder as our R, then from my number example I can rewrite it in this manner. I'd have 17 is equal to, and uh, to get these to match up, I'll take 5 times 3 plus 2. A little bit different way of writing our answer than maybe you've seen in the past, but you see how they uh, connect. This would be our A, and this would be our B, this would be our Q, and this would be our R. So you can see there's nothing nothing brand new in um, A equals BQ plus R. We've seen that before. Now our condition that R has got to be between 0 and B but can be equal to 0. Well, if your remainder, for example, is 6 in this, this, um, this particular example, if your remainder is 6, then that means that you did not uh, figure out the quotient correctly. So the, your remainder has got, always got to be less than B. Because remember, B is what we're dividing by. So this uh, this just logically uh, follows. Now there's uh, specific cases one of them is where your uh, remainder is equal to zero. If I go up to A is equal to BQ plus R and I put zero in for R, I end up with A is equal to B times Q. Well, let's let's look at an example then. And say um, I'm going to divide ten by five. Well, that gives us um, two here. Uh, two times five is ten. I'm going to subtract that. That gives us zero. Now, following our same convention, we would have ten is equal to. 5 times 2 plus 0. This is our A, this is our B, this is our Q, and this is our R. So our remainder is R. So you can see that uh, if, if your case where you got R is equal to 0, it just drops away and you're left with this. Another way of writing that is um, here we got it written in our division format, but you could write that 5, and then a vertical bar, and then 10. That says that 5 divides 10. Now, of course, our uh, example up here, uh, A is equal to BQ, 
if I think of um, how the A's and B's all, all connect, our 10 was A and our 5 was B, so we would say B divides A. So if you run across a problem that is referring to B divides A, you can equally write it in this form. And to say it divides A means the remainder 0, divides into it evenly. We're going to keep that in mind because we're going to use that uh, here shortly. Now we've got a theorem. It says if A, B, and C are integers, A cannot equal to 0, B cannot equal to 0. And if A divides B, B divides C, then A divides C. Well, let's, let's uh, think about what that's saying. If we have uh, 3 divides 12, for example. So 3 goes into 12 evenly. And you have 12 divides 24. Then this this is indicating that 3 divides 24. So it goes from here and you can connect these two together. That's assuming that uh, this number here is the same as this number here. Well let's look at the proof. They tell us that A divides B. They also tell us that B divides C. Now from up here, remember we said if, if you got uh, B divides A, then you can write it in this form. Okay. So this becomes B is equal to, and then we're going to have A times some integer. And I've used A, B, and C, so let's put D here. This one, if I use the same uh, form, says that C is equal to B times some integer. Let's use E. Well, at that point, I'm, I got B is equal to A times D. I can substitute this into the other equation. So we're working with C is equal to B times E. And over here we said B is equal to AD. So we can replace the B here with AD. So we've got C is equal to ADE. Now, if I were to put parentheses just to really emphasize it, this is A times, uh, inside of parentheses, DE. Now, D and E are just integers. So this would be like two, 2 times 3. So um, uh, integer times another integer is just an integer. Well, using the uh, same concept here, we can go backwards. And this indicates to us, since DE is just an integer, then that uh, implies that A divides C. And that uh, proves that theorem.